Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be making a high volume flipping guide. Now you might say that high volume flipping is one of the simplest forms of flipping and you are probably correct. Items like Zolver scales, runes, ammunition, food and ores, those are all extremely basic items to flip and some of the first ones that people do. That being said, I still feel like there are quite a few mistakes that most people end up making. And I think people might actually benefit from a high volume flipping guide, so I decided to go ahead and make one. Anyway guys, hope you enjoy and let's get started. Now if you are pretty new to flipping, I'm going to link a beginner's flipping guide in the description. So I would go ahead and watch that first, and then maybe come back to this video after. I'm going to start off with the largest mistake I see people making when they're flipping high volume items, and that is uh, they don't have enough money. Now I'm going to preface this by saying that uh, high volume items are an excellent way to learn how to flip. So if you're just learning and you don't have a lot of money, continue on with these types of items. They're great for learning and they won't punish you as much for mistakes. However, if you're trying to actually earn a significant amount of money, doing this with, for example, two or three mil isn't going to be very effective. Now, the reason for that is you pretty much need to be at the Grand Exchange the entire time to do this as the items will be coming through very quickly. A lot of these buy offers won't take longer than five to 10 minutes maximum to actually come through. So that doesn't really give you much time to leave the Grand Exchange. So in that case, you really want to be taking advantage of all of the offer slots and the max buy limit for all of those. That is really the only way to actually make this type of flipping viable is to be there the entire time focusing and switching items up quite frequently. Now compared to other types of flipping, this one's a lot more hands-on, a little bit more click intensive, quite a bit higher effort than some others, but it generally is extremely consistent money and occasionally it can even be better than the highest level PVM bosses. So I would recommend having around 40 to 50 mil before you really start seriously flipping high volume items for a good profit. 40 to 50 mil will allow you to get most of your offer slots filled up uh, with the buying limit, which is generally around 10,000. As the buying limit resets only after four hours, you generally are not gonna wanna do more than that amount as you'll end up waiting around for way too long. You are better off just hitting the buying limit on a bunch of different items and then just moving on to something else or just stop flipping altogether. In general, I try to stray away from most free to play items. Now, this isn't necessarily a rule I always follow. However, if you have two items that are very similar, one's pay to play and one's free to play, the competition for free to play items is generally gonna be a lot higher. So I would stick to pay to play items whenever possible. Another thing to keep in mind is the item's ROI, which is return on investment. The ROI that you can expect to get back for high volume items is generally a bit lower than high margin items. The ROI just being the percentage of money you're getting back for your investment. I would say a decent ROI on a high volume item would be one to 2%. A good one would be 2 to 3%, an excellent ROI would be 3 to 4%, and an amazing ROI would be 4 to 5%. You do have to keep in mind the item's price because as you get down to cheaper items, an item could have a 1 GP margin but have an ROI of 5% still. I wouldn't really look at the item's return on investment unless the item is at least a couple hundred GP. As for example, on G Tracker, the item with the highest ROI right now is the Bronze Arrow Tip at 50%. So clearly that's not the best item to do, but it does have the highest ROI, but you're only buying an item for 2 GP and selling it for 3 GP. It's just because it's extremely cheap, that's the reason it's up here. So that kind of brings me into my next piece of advice. I would generally avoid items below 50 GP. You could still go for some of these cheaper items, but I find they take a long time to buy and sell when you consider that their volume is extremely high. For example, doing something like the Willow Log, it does have a 1 GP margin, but it's going to take a long time to do that. Okay, so let's start off with some flipping. Uh, there's a few different ways to approach this. There's what I like to call the shotgun method, which is just going through a list of items you already have, just doing pretty much all of them. Uh, or there's the more selective method. I just like giving things names, guys. Those aren't really that advanced to concepts or anything. The selective method is obviously where you're more selective with your items. You're going to look only for the best value items. And this is probably the best approach. The shotgun method is good if you don't really feel like thinking. You're just going to slam a bunch of items in there. And they're going to come through very quickly. So I like to start by looking at the top 100 most traded items on the OSRS website. I do kind of have my own personal list of items that I generally try to do. Let's just start off with, uh, well, let's try some rune dart tips. Obviously, the price of the item that you're doing is going to depend a bit on the amount of money you have. Right now, I have uh, 100 mil. So doing an item that's 1.2k isn't too big of an issue. 17 GP margin, that's pretty damn good. I'm gonna be undercutting on an item like this. However, I wouldn't recommend doing it if the margin was only one or two GP. 
If you do have Rune Light, you can actually turn on the GE feature where it'll show you the buying limits right here, which is extremely useful. I would highly recommend getting this if you can. Since we're only flipping on one account, the goal is to spend as much of the money as possible, but also have all the offer slots filled up. So this is when calculating the ROI can be kind of handy. The Mahogany Plank has an 8 GP return on it, uh, but the Rune Dart Tip has a 17 GP margin on it. So it's pretty obvious that the Rune Dart Tip is a better buy in this case. The Mahogany's Plank's ROI is only about 0.4%, where the Rune Dart Tip's ROI is about 1.4%, so it's quite a bit better for the Rune Dart Tip. When I'm buying and selling items, I generally try to have a mix of items that are going to come through really quickly, like Zolver Scales, and slower ones like Rune Darts that are going to have better margins but might take a little bit longer. When you're looking at a website like GE Tracker, you're generally just looking for ideas as the margin check is going to be so cheap and uh, things change so quickly that it's not really going to be worth your time to actually guess the price with a third party software. We haven't even successfully put in more than three offers before the cannonballs came through. I'm pretty sure the margin was 140. So if we check that in there, uh, ooh, we actually instantly sold that. That was really weird. That was a really good flip on cannonballs, actually. We just made 60k pretty much instantly. We're going to chuck these Zolver scales back in for 165. There'll be 30k there. All right, raw sharks. That's a really good margin on raw sharks. We're going to do that as quickly as possible. And the buying limit is 15k. That's extremely good. Dragon Bones generally doesn't have a very good ROI on it, but the uh, turnaround time is so quick that it doesn't really even matter that much. An 11 GP margin, where if we did 10k or 7.5k, we'll get about 100k back. And this is why having 40 to 50 mil is kind of important. You need to actually kind of bump up to these more expensive items like rune dart tips, raw sharks. That way your time is going to be more valuable. If you're just waiting on one GP flips the entire time, uh, it's going to not really be worth your time too much because you're only going to get maybe like three or 400k back an hour. Where if you bump up to these more expensive high volume items, you can get one, two, even three mil sometimes. Now, another option here is you can hop over onto GE Tracker and go to their high volume page. Now, this is kind of more for ideas, and it does sometimes show when there's a big price fluctuation. So, for example, the Blue Dragon Hide with a 27 GP margin. Okay, so the margin's a little bit less here, but still not bad. So, we're going to go ahead and do a Blue Dragon Hide. We can do 13k of them. That's about 25 mil investment, so it's quite a bit. Uh, we'll go ahead and do some grapes. Why not? Not a bad margin. Okay, grapes came through already at 103. We're going to check them back into 105. And we'll do Adamant Ore. Again, it is a free-to-play item, but the margin's pretty good. The limit is pretty low. Only 4,500 is kind of weird. Ah, but we'll do it. And one more offer slot, and we have to spend 19 mil. Ah, I'll put in for 11,000 of them. And there we go. We filled up all of the offer slots. The items are slowly coming through. You do want to be a bit patient, uh, but not too patient as margins change quickly. You probably will need to redo it if it's been too long. Anyway, we'll wait a little bit and we'll come back when everything's sold off. Another tip is to always pull out uh, a bit of the offer as it comes through. That way you can actually tell if it's still trickling through. If the item is trickling through, that's that's good. It means it's still buying and you're probably getting a good price on it. It can be somewhat challenging to determine if the item is still buying if you haven't collected the item yet. This bar isn't very accurate, so collecting a bit at a time can be helpful. I know for a fact that these three items are still coming through slowly. Uh, so we have the dragon bones all the way through. Let's go ahead and uh, check that margin again. Uh, 24, 11. Uh, so we're getting about a 10 GP margin on dragon bones. Not bad. I think that's what we initially wanted, which means we're going to get 100k in profit off of this. So like I said, we can easily see that we are still buying green dragon leather. Perfect. We actually got a pretty good profit on the adamant ore. We sold it for 59.24 and we bought it for 58.65, uh, which is about an 80k profit, which is pretty good for a free to play item. Now, in general, I would recommend uh, selling uh, some items back as you get them. Uh, for videos, I generally don't do that, but that's just to make things a bit clearer, easier to visualize. But if you're on a personal account, like you know the margin you're getting. You don't need to make it nice and pretty afterwards. Like for example, the raw shark, I would probably be selling off because the margin was so good and it's not likely to stay like that forever. Although, oh my, God. okay, I'm selling it off. Okay, we're gonna dump that in there right away. That means we could potentially get like 400K in profit just off this raw shark flip. That's, that's massive. And as always, we wanna keep all of our offer slots filled, either buying something or selling something. Uh, so we're gonna throw in for the teak plank Look at that, guys. That is such a big profit on the Rush Arc. But we got about 40 GP, and we've so far flipped 8,000 of them, which means we got 320k in profit off of the Rush Arc, which is so good. Okay, we just checked a regular Shark. Again, a really good margin. I don't think they actually share a buying limit either, so we'll go ahead and just do 10,000 of the Rush Arc. 
So I'm assuming the raw shark's price must have just quickly changed on this because there's no way we would have actually gotten the margin that large. 646 into 645. Yeah, okay. So we just got kind of lucky on that one. Let's just pull this item out and we'll be able to see how much money we made. We bought them for 4832. Sold them for 5143, which is about a 300k profit. Really good. Again, Blue Dragon Eye probably not coming through anymore. So we're just going to cut our losses and pull that out. And we're going to sell it for 18 to 8. So we're selling it for 10,545, and we bought it for 10,374. A pretty decent margin on Blue Dragon Hide. As always, we try to keep our offer slots totally filled up, so we just kind of chucked in some more offers. We're just in the process of editing the clips as I go, so we ended up waiting a little bit longer than we needed to. And it was only it was about 30 minutes. This normally won't take that long. Okay, so we have pretty much everything sold off. We're gonna go ahead and pull out these last two items here: the teak blank and the green dragon eye. I'm being a little impatient here, so we'll just go ahead and sell these off. We're not gonna lose much money here, and then we can just have a nice completed offer slot okay so there we go let's go ahead and have a look at some of the margins we got here okay so for example on the blue dragon eye we sold it for 10 4 5 4 and we got it for 10 at 3 7 2 a pretty nice margin there we got about 100k in profit off of the rune darts teak planks we got about 40 gp in profit green dragon eye we're getting about 10 gp in profit in each one so let's go ahead and just pull everything out and see how much money we ended up making so off of just a few flips we made around one mil you can see here we have 963k over where we started and that really was not a lot of flips it did take me a bit longer but i wasn't really paying attention the entire time i waited about half an hour at the end there just for the last few items to come through so a few final thoughts here items within the 1 to 2k price range i think are some of the more cost effective uh, items with the best return on your investments that's not always the case but in general i've found items around that price range to be the best stuff like raw shark teak planks red chinchambas blue dragon hide I personally like flipping those items the most, and that's why I recommend having at least 40 or 50 mil. The items come through pretty consistently, generally don't have as much competition as some of the cheaper items, and it's not as hectic. You're not constantly switching out items all the time. If you just kept doing stuff like runes and Zalra scales and cannonballs, you're constantly having to pay attention. Where these ones, you definitely can AFK for 20, 30 minutes even sometimes and still get a good return. If you're using one account, you want to make sure your offer slot is entirely filled up all the time, and generally you don't want to have money just sitting around doing nothing. It's good to keep the item's ROI in the back of your mind, but I wouldn't specifically check every one, and it's really not that hard to visualize what return you're getting on cheaper items around the 1000 GP mark. Anyway guys, that is pretty much it for the video. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I'll leave a link in the description to some other flipping guides if you're interested. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.